hillside, what happens is there's what's made with what's called a cut. The well or road, the center might be there where the point is going to be, but after construction is made, it'll be down there. This is called the cut slope, the fill material. This material will be put over the side, and that is the fill slope. In actuality, what it tends to look like is that's the existing hill, that's the cut slope, there's the pad or the road, the existing hill, but you have a lot of the fill material. So this is the cut slope, that's the fill slope. This material in here is not stable. So if they're drilling a well, they'll have the equipment placed on the original surface and they'll have the pit put in the unstable area. Now, the manual requires two ditches on a site. One is up above with a dike to catch water off the slope above the site and deflect it off of the cut slope and away from the site and then water down the fill slope, or the cut slope, goes into a ditch at the base of the cut slope. This keeps the pad itself or the road free of water. We've yet to see a site that has a, uh, a ditch and a dike at the top of a cut slope, even though the cut slopes might be a couple hundred feet long and you might have five or 20 acres above. So that means all the water coming down, that five or 20 acres, is coming down the hillside, down the cut slope, into a very small ditch. The cut slope is usually too steep to, to sustain itself, so it collapses and fills the ditch. So what you end up is having water coming from off the site, down a collapsed cut slope, and onto the pad. The fill slope, because it's unstable, this is a culvert, that's the original slope, and here's the fill slope culvert comes out and it's deflecting water from a road or from uh, the pad of uh, the dike or the ditch at the ed edge of the pad at the base of the cut slope. This culvert is unloading right onto highly erodible material in the fill slope. It's just loose material. Uh, so there, there's two solutions. If it's a very long fill slope, what you have to do is you have to have an extension of the culvert go all the way down to the base of the fill slope and deflect water away from the fill slope. If it's a short fill slope, what you can do is put riprap rock or construct a, a cement area so the water, when it hits, is hitting a hard surface and is not hitting the, the fill. The, the, this rock should go almost to the foot of the fill slope. You can't just have it for a couple feet. Now, because the fill slope is highly erodible, it's very important that you have something at the base of the fill slope to get the stop the erodible material from leaving the site, and you need to have a space of vegetation 
between the edge of the fill slough and any water. Now, now none of this is really discussed much in the erosion and sedimentation control field manual. This is what a decent road should look like. It's graveled, good ditches on each side. Most of the walls we've seen have looked like this one before it was graveled, badly rutted. This is an earth road that has a low spot where it crosses a stream. Water bars are required on each segment of the road going down to this low spot and they exist but they've been run through so many times that the ruts actually form channels. The first group of photos of this road show a road on a very steep grade, very poor ditches if any, and it should be graveled but isn't. The ruts are, are at least six to eight inches deep. In this picture, Molly's taking photograph of deep ruts. The road actually is collapsing on the fill slope side and the vehicles are having to run in the ditch. Water bars are required in instances where there's a steep slope and there's water at the base. Ditches are required. Silt control is required. The operators don't seem to know how to apply it. So the bales spin or become overrun. Clogged culverts are common. In this case, the silt was so bad they actually placed bales protecting a culvert and the silt overran the bales. This is on a state road.